In this video, we are going to integrate a Riblet Instant Access Point with ClearPass to create a Captive Portal guest solution. The Captive Portal solution will consist of a Captive Portal web login page hosted by ClearPass Guest, the Radius authentications, which will be handled by ClearPass Policy Manager, and the SSID, which will be put on the Aruba Instant Access Point. In the video, we are going to be using Instant Access Point version 6.2.0.0 slash 3.2.0.1 and ClearPass version 6.0.2. I have three tabs open in my browser. One is for the Instant Access Point, one is for ClearPass Policy Manager, and one is for ClearPass Guest. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into settings and we're going to give this cluster a virtual IP address. We're also going to enable dynamic radius proxy. What this setting does is if I had multiple APs in this cluster, by default without this setting, all of those APs would make radius requests directly to the authentication server. With this setting, all of the requests will go through the virtual controller IP. So on the radius server, all the requests appear to be coming from 10.162.108.3. We're also going to give ourselves an NTP server and let's set the time zone. Next, we're going to set up a new SSID. We're going to call it guest and we'll put this primary usage at guest. If we turn on advanced options, there's a few new options. The one thing we're going to use is bandwidth limits. So since this is a guest network, I'm going to limit each user to 512 KB per second. The client IP assignment, we're going to leave this at virtual controller assigned, so clients will get our IP address in the range 192.168. Set this to external with a radius server, and we're going to define a new authentication server. This authentication server is going to be the ClearPass Policy Manager. The shared key is used in radius communications. We're going to give something here. The same thing you give here, we're going to need that in a few minutes when we configure the ClearPass Policy Manager. Enable RFC 3576 because in the future it will give you advanced control. The NAS IP address and NAS identifier are used to tag each radius packet so the radius server knows where the communication is coming from. So in that sense, we're going to give it the IP address and a name, uh, an identifier so the policy manager knows where these are coming from. We'll enable radius accounting and we'll set radius interim accounting to every 10 minutes. Next, the external splash page. We're going to put the ClearPass guest side of things here. So since ClearPass policy manager and ClearPass guest exist on the same server, it's going to be that same address as our radius server. Uh, but the URL will be different. So for ClearPass guest, we're going to put this URL and we're going to create it later. Port, let's leave that at 80. We can use HTTPS, but for now, let's leave this at 80, and we'll redirect them to 443 when we need to. Our last tab, Access, we're going to set this to role-based. As we're creating this SSID, it automatically gets created a new user role called the name of the SSID you're creating, which pretty much says allow access to any destinations. That's fine for us. We do need a new role, and this role will be a guest logon role. We don't want to allow all, so let's delete that and let's create two. What we want is we want HTTP and HTTPS access to the ClearPass guest. Okay, HTTP. Okay. And what we'll do is We'll put that under the pre-authentication role. So a user is going to fall into the pre-auth role initially, and after they authenticate, they'll be placed into the guest role. 
Okay, and we can see our new SSIDs there. Heading over to ClearPass Geist, under Configuration Authentication, make sure that Require HTTPS for Guest Access is enabled. We'll now create a web login page. We need to name it the same name that we gave it under the IAP redirect settings. Slash guest will always be prepended to any captive portal pages defined. Accept the rest of the defaults. Next, let's create a guest user account. We'll place them in the guest user role. Okay, we have a new user account we can use to test with. And now moving over to the policy manager side, we need to create a new network device. This network device will be the IAP virtual IP address. Give that same shared secret that you defined earlier and set the vendor to Arupa. Enable the radius COA. Okay. And next we'll go into services. There are already a few predefined services that we're going to use. These are included in 601 and 602. So the first ones we're going to look at is we're going to be using guest access web login pre auth and guest access. The web login pre auth is your first attempt, and the guest access is your actual user attempt. The, this is the one that will change their role on the IEP. We do need to make one small edit to this service. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the service roles so this condition matches. Right now it's set to ESSID name equals and a generic SSID. We're going to change this to the exact SSID name that we gave earlier, which is a lowercase guess. Okay, we are ready to test. We'll join the guest SSID. We'll go to a web address, and it looks like it's going to redirect to the Captive Portal page. We'll put in the user account that we created earlier. Great, and it looks like I'm fully authenticated. So what we'll do next is we'll switch back to a different SSID, and we're going to look at both the instant and the policy manager access tracker to see that authentication go through. So on Policy Manager, if I refresh Access Tracker, we see two authentication requests. Both are accept. The first one is the pre-auth, like we talked about, and the second one is a guest access. So that's the one that switched to user. Next, if we take a look at the instant, we can see that the user still hasn't aged out, even though I've disconnected from the SSID. We can see that the username that I used to log in is there, and also that the role is under guest. And that completes this video on setting up ClearPass Captive Portal with Instant Access Point.